The question I always have with fire is, can you make fire when it counts? And can you do it under difficult conditions or with a difficult method? So we got a lot of snow coming down right now. Snow is blowing sideways. I put some footage at the beginning of this video to show you that. Temperatures are dropping quickly. I'm in an area of woods right now and all I have is a piece of flint and my large forest type knife. I don't even have a small knife with me for processing anything. I've got some charred cloth. I'm going to collect up some material and we're going to make a sustainable fire and we're going to try to do it very quickly without messing around. Stay with me. Okay, I got a couple pieces of tulip poplar here right off the ground in the snow. That bark is definitely damp. No question about that. But there's enough of it on this one or two pieces here for a decent bird nest. We're just going to have to process it down. And like I said, it's going to be damp. So we're gonna to have to have a good fire lay because damp material like this will go up, but we're going to have to keep it lit once we get it going. We can't take a chance on a marginal fire lay. We gotta have the right stuff in our fire lay. Really don't want anything in this initial fire lay bigger than my pinky. I'd rather have everything small. This bird nest is going to take a few minutes to go up probably because it's wet even with a viable piece of char cloth. So in those cases you use a bigger piece of char cloth for extended heat. And that will give you a longer ember to deal with because what you have to do is you have to ensure that this fire works. You can't just guess. It's got to happen. So I'll put a piece of char cloth in the nest and then I'll use another one separated to light. Like I said, I don't have any kind of a striking device with me, so I've got to light this piece of char cloth off my knife. I've got some more bark right here on this tulip poplar beside me, right here, that I can add to the fire immediately once I get flame to help give me more longevity in that flame.
get myself something secure here. I like this char cloth on. Let's get that camera moved around a little bit so y'all can see this. so I can get better sparks off of it. My flames are all below my fuel sources, and that's the way it has to be. Give myself plenty of oxygen in here and aeration to make sure that that stuff can climb up. Wet weather fires are tricky. You gotta have lots of good stuff to catch fire. Now, you've got a little bit of time now to grab some other things, get them on there. Just make sure that you're not suffocating your fire. You don't want to add fuel to this fire until your flame is above the current level of fuel. So once your flame start to peak over what you've got on there, then you can start putting some other stuff on. Don't put anything on there too big too fast. Take your time. You got plenty of it to be honest with you. If you've got a good bird nest and you've got good kindling materials in there, you got plenty of time. Get your equipment secured, get your gloves back on, get your breath, all that good stuff and just let it eat. Now I got flames way up above the fuel level, so now I can start sticking other pieces of fuel on there, adding bigger pieces all those types of things to give myself that nice big warming fire. They're a little bit damp, you don't have to worry about it at this point because now you've got something built that can dry that wood out. Okay guys, that's how you build a quick fire with possibly marginal material and definite marginal weather. It's starting to clear up a little bit now. I wanted to make sure I got it done while it was still snowing. It's been snowing all morning on and off, but we got a good blizzard-like storm come through there for a few minutes. I wanted to get out here and make sure I did this in that type of weather. Pick stuff up off the ground and around that already had snow falling on it, things like that. And let you realize that it can be done very easily with marginal materials, even with a less optimal ignition source like char cloth, if you understand the basic components. Processing the bird's nest or the tinder bundle making sure that you're using the right type of kindling materials that are small and highly combustible that will heat up quick from the fire and then make sure that you're not adding material to the fire 
until the flames are above the current level of fuel so that you're not suffocating the fire. All of those things are very, very important. I'm Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School. I thank you for your views and your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and our business, all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.